Hey, so welcome back to Module 2. We're going to keep going with creating your company file. This is Part 2 of Section 2. And when we left off, we were actually talking about how to manage the bills that you owe. Now, bills come in the mail that you have to pay. Some people will actually take all the bills, put them in a basket on their desk, and then when it's time to pay the bills, they'll just look through it and pick out what they're wanting to pay at that moment. And that's certainly okay. It'll keep your QuickBooks accounting straight. But if you really want to make full use of the program, it's designed so that any bills that you need to pay go in this bill pay section. And that way you can run reports and then you can see who you owe, how much you owe, how much is over 30 days, things like that. So you probably do want to keep track of the bills that you owe. So we'll say yes here. Now the next screen asks about tracking inventory in QuickBooks. So let me give you a little terminology. True inventory means that I have six chairs in the back room and I'd like QuickBooks to tell me when I have two left so that I can order some more. You're going to hear another term often called non-inventory and those are physical items that you buy or sell but you don't really care to know that you have two in the back room. You just, maybe you want to run reports from time to time and see how many you've bought or sold. So we're just going to go ahead and turn the inventory feature on. We'll click next. Now, tracking the time that you spend in QuickBooks. A couple of ways to use this. Number one, if you do job costing, you will want to use this because job costing means that you want to know how much it costs for everything to work on this particular project. Maybe you build houses and you want to know the total cost involved. Some of that cost is actual time you or your employees spent on that particular job. So you do have the ability to track the time on the employee timesheet or it could be you're in a business like your attorney for example where he or she might bill their customers by the hour and they want to keep track of that as well. So you can use that a couple different ways. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And then the next question says do you have employees? Now this is just going to turn the payroll icons on on the screen. It's not going to actually sign you up with their payroll service. In a later module when we talk about payroll, you'll see that it's not free. You have to actually subscribe to one of their services. Now if you do say yes here, you have to also check that you have W-2 employees. This statement here, we have 1099 contractors, is very misleading because 1099 contractors have nothing to do with payroll, absolutely nothing. So what you're going to find is that you're going to enter your 1099 contractors as vendors. And what you should do is after you've entered them as vendors, make them actually send you a bill to get paid. That's the proper way to do that. So I'll go ahead and check yes and we have W2 employees and click next. Now we're almost at the end here. It's going to talk to us about our chart of accounts next. Now as soon as we pick a date here, it'll take us over to the chart of accounts. We have to give it a start to date. And it doesn't matter if it's the beginning of the fiscal year or if you want to start at a certain date during the year. I always say if it's closer to the end of the year, then go ahead and get last month's bank statement. And whatever its ending date is, go ahead and use that date. You can go the beginning of the year, but that would be a lot of data to put in. So just remember that your reports are only as accurate as the data that's in here. I'll just say the beginning of the fiscal year and click next. Now we're on the last screen where it's showing us our chart of accounts. Now this is based on how we answered all of the questions. If you're not familiar with a chart of accounts, it's the backbone of all accounting. Every time you spend money, you're going to tell it what you spent the money for. If you receive money, was it a sale for your business? And so you can see the ones that are checked are the ones that they've decided that you need. If you happen to be looking down this list, and you say, you know, I spend a lot on charitable contributions, check it off. But we're going to go ahead and set ours up once we get inside a QuickBooks. So we'll have these and then we'll go and add some more to show you how this works. Now when I click next here, we're going to be done. It says congratulations, you've completed the Easy Step interview. So now what's going to happen is we're going to go to the setup screen and then we'll take it from there. So you're pretty much set up at this point. You're just going to have to go in and change some preferences and things like that. So that's going to complete this particular video. So why don't you guys go ahead and head on over to the next one, which is my company overview, and we'll take it from there. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. 
If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the Learn More button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.